Let's look at a nice number theory problem that comes from a Princeton University math contest in 2011. And so our goal is to determine all primes p so that 43 divides 7 to the p minus 6 to the p plus 2. So in other words, 7 to the p minus 6 to the p plus 2 is a multiple of 43. So we're going to start by putting this into the language of modular arithmetic. So this is equivalent to saying that 7 to the p minus 6 to the p plus 2 is congruent to 0 modulo 43. But then we can subtract 2 from both sides and then use the fact that negative 2 is congruent to 41 mod 43 to rewrite this as the equivalent statement 7 to the p minus 6 to the p is congruent to 41 modulo 43. Okay, so now we've reduced this, or maybe reduced isn't the right word, but we've rewritten the original problem as, you know, solving this congruence, this like exponential congruence for primes p. Okay, so next up, let's recall Euler's theorem, or maybe the special case, which is for Ma's little theorem. So here, let's maybe state it as Euler's theorem first. And that says if the GCD of a number A and a number N is equal to 1, then A to the power of phi of N is congruent to 1 modulo N. And you might say, well, what is phi of N? Well, that's Euler's totient function, which counts the number of numbers that are relatively prime to N, between 1 and N. Okay, and then next up I want to like look at a result that follows from Euler's theorem having to do with the so-called order of an integer modulo n. But I'm not going to really state it like that. I'll just state it like this. So if a to the m is congruent to 1 modulo n, then m divides phi of n. So what that really means is that the only orders of an integer modulo n are divisors of phi of n. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, let's apply all of this to our problem and let's note that as long as 43 does not divide a, then we know that a to the 42, which is phi of 43, or 43 minus 1, is congruent to 1 modulo 43. So that's Fermat's little theorem. Okay, but what does that tell us about the order of elements? Well, it tells us that the possible orders are, well, divisors of 42, but we can write those down pretty easily. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, I think maybe 14 will be next, 28, and then 42 after that. So those are all of the divisors of 42. So that means that perhaps we should find the order of 7 and the order of 6 modulo 43, but we don't have to go very far just because those numbers are relatively small. And the fact that this is part of a math contest where you have limited time and we're not really testing computational skill, mostly just problem solving skill, the orders are probably fairly small. Okay, so let's make the following calculations. So let's start with determining the order of seven. So notice that 7 to the 1, well, that's congruent to 7 mod 43. There's nothing really to do there. 7 squared, well, 7 squared is obviously equal to 49, but 49 is congruent to 6 modulo 43 because it's 6 more than 43. And then 7 cubed, well, we don't need to do 7 times 49 because we're reducing mod 43. So we'll just do 7 times 6. And so this is congruent to 42, which is in turn congruent to negative 1 modulo 43. 
but that means that if we take seven to the sixth power, that's the same thing as seven cubed squared, and that'll give us negative one squared, which is one modulo 43. So in other words, the order of seven mod 43 is six. But with that, we can build the following chart, which will be super helpful towards our goal. So that chart goes like this. So seven to the six n plus one is always congruent to seven mod 43. And then seven to the six n plus two is congruent to, well, let's see, it'll be six, so six modulo 43. And then seven to the six n plus three is congruent to, oh, negative one or 42. So 42 modulo 43. And then finally, seven to the six n plus five is congruent to what? Well, that'll be like six times negative one because it's two plus three is five. But six times negative one is negative six. Oh, but that'll be like 37. So 37 mod 43. And you might say, well, don't we need the others? We're missing six n plus four and plain old six n. But notice that six n plus four, that is never prime. It's always divisible by two and it's never equal to two. And six in, well, that's also never prime. It's always divisible by two and three. Now notice that six in plus two is only prime when n is equal to zero. And six in plus three is only prime when n is equal to one. So this just gives us two primes here to work with. So this is the p equals two case, and this is the p equals three case. Whereas these others, this six n plus one, there are infinitely many primes like that, and there are infinitely many primes of the form six n plus five. And since we're exponentiating by a prime, it's good to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's maybe bring that chart to the top, and then we'll make a similar one for powers of six. Okay, so here's what we came up with on the last board. We found the powers of seven to the p mod 43. When p was a prime of the form six n plus one, we got seven. When p was equal to two, we got six. When p was equal to three, we got 42. And then when p was of the form six n plus five, we got 37. And now let's work at six to the p in these cases. And recall that the possible orders of a number mod 43, well, that involved all divisors of 42. So it's possible that our chart isn't big enough, but kind of looking ahead and keeping in mind that we're looking for a simple solution, we expect the order of six to like work nicely with the order of seven. Okay, so let's make a simple chart. So we've got six to the one. Well, that's pretty clearly congruent to six modulo 43, and then six squared is congruent to 36 mod 43. But notice that 36, what is that? That's negative six. Well, let's notice that 36 is negative seven mod 43. So that allows us to calculate six cubed pretty easily. So six cubed will be congruent to negative seven times six, but that's negative 42. Oh, but negative 42 is simply one mod 43 because we add 43 to it and we get one. So this is congruent to one modulo 43. But now we can fill this in. Not only is this true for one, but this will be true for everything of the form six n plus one. And this is true for everything of the form six n plus two and six n plus three. And then we'll loop back around. This is also six n plus four because here the order is three and then so on and so forth. So to fill this chart in, well, everything of the form six n plus one will give us the number six. Everything of the form uh, six n plus two, which is the number two, will give us 36. Six n plus three, which is simply the number three, will give us one. And then six n plus five, which loops back around to this one right here, will give us 36 again. Okay, nice. 
But now let's take their difference and see when we get 41. And we're only gonna get that one of the times. So seven minus six is one, 37 minus 36 is one. Six minus 36 is negative 30, but negative 30 is the same thing as 13. And then finally, 42 minus one is 41. So the only solution we get is this one right here, the case when we have, well, a prime of the form six n plus three. In other words, the prime p equals three. Okay, so there we've done it. We've just found all the primes that make this condition hold, and that's a good place to stop.